Georgia is considering a similar piece of legislation that India just passed into law. India. Indiana just passed into law, which would allow businesses to discriminate against LGBT members. Now, interestingly enough, CNN had an interview with a florist that lives in Georgia, and they kind of called the florist bluff when it comes to the issue of discrimina discrimination. At another flower shop just down the street, the exact same opinions from the florist and her son, who is studying to be a Southern Baptist pastor. I would respectfully tell them that I'm sorry that I just don't want to do it because of my beliefs. But right now, you know, while Georgia is considering a law to make that legal for you to do that, it is not, and you can get in trouble for doing that. I understand that. So you would be willing to take that risk? Yeah. He died on the cross for me, so that's the least I could do for him. I serve a God who's higher than any Supreme Court judge. It's called the judge of the universe, and I don't care what anybody else says. So no matter what, whether it's a law or not, you would not bring your flowers to a gay commitment ceremony? No. Okay, so... You didn't even say wedding. The person that you saw there at first was Flores Melissa Jeffcoat. She's very clear. Jesus died on the cross for her. So as a result, she is not going to provide flowers for a same-sex couple. And it's also important to note that her son is studying to be a Baptist minister. So they're deeply religious. They, they follow the Bible. And so... Well, they don't follow the Bible. They well, don't. We're about to get to that in just a second. They claim they follow the Bible. They claim that they follow the Bible. Um, but they seem like they're very gung-ho on discriminating against gay people because Jesus died on the cross for them. You know, in the Ten Commandments, it says you can't commit adultery. Right. It says you need to honor your father and mother. Mm-hmm. If someone didn't honor their parents or commit adultery, would you serve them? Yes. Well, why would you serve them but not serve someone who is gay? It's just a different kind of sin to me, and I just don't believe in it. <laughs> yes! I was waiting for that. I was waiting for that what little is that sound, sound effect. What is that it's sound a spitting. Yeah. It's someone oh, spitting. It's just yeah. spitting. Yeah. Tobacco. Yeah. Um, I absolutely love that because mm. it just shows you that when it comes to a huge portion of religious people in this country, and it's not just Christians, religious people in general, they will cherry pick the portions of their doctrine that allow them to carry out whatever agenda they have, whether it's a hateful agenda, whether it's a loving agenda, it doesn't matter, right? If you take the Bible in its entirety and you actually follow everything that it tells you to follow, you are a sinner. That woman right there, she's probably a massive sinner, right? And for some reason, she thinks that her sins are somehow better than the sins committed by those who are in same-sex marriages or relationships. First of all, you know, just from a biblical standpoint, she's utterly mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, the Ten Commandments are the Ten Commandments. They are very, 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 very important. But Steve, probably the most important thing, right? Some sins yeah. are worse than <laughs> other sins. Okay. Yeah, and, and Jesus never once mentioned. Never once mentioned anything like gays. They're, they're taking one line out of Leviticus and maybe one line out of some other part of the Bible, which I can't recall right now. Those two lines. Mm -hmm. Those two lines are not more important than the Ten Commandments. So, uh, so she, you know, I mean, that we violate the Ten Commandments with impunity. On, you know, we all work on the on the Sabbath. We don't we don't keep it we don't keep it holy. That's one of the that's one of the Ten Commandments. Yeah, and, and it's like eight. <laughs> yeah. So so she, you know, from a biblical standpoint, she's just flat out wrong. But the point is, Christianity in, the, in America today has been hijacked by two issues, gays and abortion. Mm -hmm. And on both, they're so massively out of touch. And this partly explains why they keep losing followers. Because if you're a free thinker or a critical thinker, you, you can't live like this. This is, this is from 2,000 years ago. This is crazy talk. I'm just glad to see journalists going after uh, sort of uh, uh, small business flower shop owners with the kind of uh, relentless one-two punch that they never give to politicians. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I actually That's a good back. point. That's a really like, good point. I have sympathy for this woman. I mean, presumably they came to her and they asked her to come in and she's like, yeah, and she's being honest. And then he's like, boom, 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 no, I gotcha. That's, I would like yeah. them to extend the same type of treatment to po politicians and people of authority. There's no question about that. But I actually think it's a good idea to interview business owners. Business owners that are so loud and outspoken when it comes to issues like this. I mean, these are the types of people yeah. that representatives in these states are trying to represent. So is there any logic in their arguments? And as you see that interview, and of course this is anecdotal evidence, but still, you see that interview and you see that it's not based on logic. I it's just, based on their own, you know... 
it's their desire their to own bigotry. It's just, it's just yeah. I, I hear you. I don't. I just would rather the sponsors of the bill. I, I hear you. I get it. This is a totally legitimate story. There's no question it's legitimate. And I would probably lose if I'd been in the newsroom. I'd probably lose that argument. But like, you take someone who's not sophisticated, and not on TV, and I hear you. Yeah, and she that, seems that's, that's she seems point. probably kind and decent. And I know. would love to meet a sophisticated individual who thinks it's okay to discriminate against gay people based on their religion. I'd love it. Yeah. yeah well, so you're look, right, I, I hear what you're saying. So you're saying that you know the media should go after you know bigger fish. Right. I totally get that. Um, but at the same time, I mean, this woman and this and her kid are so self-righteous. It's, just, it's nauseating. I mean, you know, gay people are so beneath them, they're not even worthy of my flowers. Like, I, like, I don't want their money, and they can't have my flowers. It is, <laughs> they can't have my flowers. It's, it's absurd. <laughs> they it's cannot. Absurd. They, really can't, they can't have my flowers. I'm like, give them my flowers. <laughs> All right, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and look. And he did ask it. He, he did ask it, like, fairly respectfully. He wasn't, like, you know, up in her... You know, yeah, so I, I didn't have yeah, so so either. you know we have this fear of Sharia law, and we love to point at these um, Islamic nations and say, "Look how barbaric they are." But I, I I say this: if we didn't have the separation of church and state in the U.S., it would get ugly so fast. Because these people, they don't want to you know provide public accommodations for for gays. Uh, if this country became a Christian theocracy, and you know they they ruled from the Bible. That's not all they would do to gay, to, to LGBT community, Jews, women, whatever else. They would impose, you know, the American version of Sharia law, mm -hmm. and it would, it would get ugly very fast. So thank God for the separation of church and state.